It was only a fourth of it. concept that uh, Simon had was to have these village centers, which were really in the heart of the original and historic one. But the idea was to have seven of those throughout the community. Where they faltered was in terms of how the subsequent ones were built. And it didn't have, of course, the flash of being the first and being the center of things. So in Hunter's Woods, Remember when you had you used to park your car and walk into the middle of Hunter's Woods? Yeah. 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 It, was, it was a kind of a mall rather than a, a fronting like. And of course, ultimately, it was not successful. When it was finally purchased, I think by David Ross, I think, uh, they rebuilt it and it looked kind of like a traditional shopping center. Uh, I would say that I don't think we should have any disappointment in that. We should recognize that before the higher investment that was possible on the front end of going into a community to build a village center like this, then it might be now to take a look at how subsequent built village centers and South Lake, of course, is a very typical for a village center, how amenities might still be being woven into that. In, 19, in 1972, most of you raised your hand. You were around then, right? Do you remember Watergate? We won't reiterate what that story was all like. Do you remember Palm? I did get Palm. That was a marvel. In fact, if you still have one, it's a real fun, fun to play Palm. More than these complex things they make now. And of course, Re Reston had, as all communities have, some incidents at the Ocean Fortune. They one night, leaving a bend here on Lake Ann, went in walking home strangled to death. That's still a cold case in Fairfax County. It's still a cold case. We hope at some point they might be able to figure out who in fact strangled her. Oh, and then in 72, we got our own zip code. Um, I will tell you, I spent a lot of time trying to get, for example, the highway department to recognize the rest of the rest of them, and it wasn't Herndon or it wasn't the other. The problem we had is we weren't incorporated. <coughs> Folks who work in state government think in terms of incorporated communities. And so if you're an incorporated town, you'll get your sign up. But if you were an incorporated uh, city likewise, but if you were a planned unit development community that had all the amenities of a town or, or even a city, it's hard to get recognition. So getting singled out, not singled out, but getting involved like everybody else is getting a zip code was pretty important stuff. And that's a picture of Gwen and you know, her mother, Priscilla, Lyle and Demery Rucker were here in the plaza so successfully so good many years when the grocery store went out of business, they put up the grocery store, uh, carried out a lot of activities to create community uh, here in Lake Ann. In, in the winter of 72, they opened the International Center. And if you know the topography of Western, you know that the, the uh, International Center sits at the highest point in Western. And the idea was to uh, kind of make it a beacon, if you would. And so that multi sort of high rise, one of the few high rises around at that point in time, was built to focus on that we were at the center, this high point of Western as a community. But also, we wanted to, and the idea of Western being open. Affirming, and incidentally, even though Bob Simon looked, left the scene, his ideas and master plan remained. And I think we all really should be pleased to the degree to which the investors continued to try to keep that alive. And I know you can focus some things were they were set aside, but for the most part, they kept alive. And so it is with the International Center. It was to be not just an office building, but one of the international. And that's why it is when the, when the International Center was dedicated, 18 nations sent representatives to participate in the dedication. It was a big deal, and the idea was to try to attract more people to it. Now, again, it's plaza probably too, too far away from the residential, maybe not big enough. It's plaza didn't work out very well. But now you know, uh, it's 
Don't let the people. Seventy-three Secretariat won a triple crown. Forces have been trying ever since to try to match that. Roe versus Wade in 1973. And I can tell you there are a whole bunch of people around wishing that the court hadn't overturned that because they put it back in the political arena and we have all these debates about Roe and about reproductive rights. And I think it was one of the largest influences in this past election in November is how the results came out. But nonetheless, that, in that instance, the Supreme Court set up a standard that maybe didn't satisfy everybody, but it seemed to have a reasonableness to it. And it essentially closed off that debate about when, in fact, uh, one woman could make a choice. The National Council of Negro Women uh, opened its breast in chapter 1973. It's still born strong. Uh, look at some of their events that they have, and good, good things go again, how they integrate uh, into the community. And the United Christian Parish was dedicated. Okay, so, uh, okay, the Triple Crown, hang on. Remember the Pony Stadium? The Pony Car? Pony Car, yeah. It had like 40 stalls in it. And many of the trails had parallel horse trails that you, uh, the horses, and you could ride your horse on, so on. It was a winter, I think it was, that it fell in. It was a big expanse so that you could ride your horses around and around. But it planned, apparently the engineering and so on wasn't all that good, and with the actual weight on the fell in. It was actually, I thought, a very attractive building, but um, it wasn't revived. Now, this is not atypical. How many communities do you know that have, has a golf course and it's grown up in weeds? You choose an amenity, and the amenity has tracked the number of people. And here we are next to Loudoun County, Leesburg, all that. Right next to the Fairfax Hunt. You know, the Fairfax Hunt is when you go off of seven out like, to Lake Fairfax. That's where the Fairfax Hunt was. So it was very much horse country. So it made sense at the time to have horse access to horses. But um, Mother Nature's book. National Council of Negro Women. You'll recognize some of these names. I don't know if you knew Lillian Blackwell or not, but when I, when I first came to, to uh, Fairfax County and involved myself, you're playing like several wars. You recorded my poem already. <laughs> Kathy Hudgens, yeah. you're Kathy Lampkin, Dolores Wilkins. Jay Grant, Irene Jones. So there was a diversity of religion in Reston. But there was something unique in the 70s that was happening, not only in Reston, but actually throughout the world. And that was a, the matter of you. Say it, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Humanism. Right. I was trying to get it out, but I couldn't read her lips. <laughs> and the idea of you. Humanism is that these different denominations don't make all that much sense when you think about it. Some of the liturgies, some of the uh, processes and so on might make a difference. But particularly among all these Protestant denominations, maybe you can only stand, understand the differences among the denominations by knowing the history, how they came about. Because substantively, uh, they're not all much different. So one of the experiments in ecumenism occurred right here in Ruston. And that was four churches. Bob Reagan uh, was the first minister of the uh, Methodist Church. What was the Methodist Church called? The United Christian Church. Redeemer. 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 Church, right up here on the hill. Um, then came um, Doug Ibach from the Presbyterian Church. And in the discussion then they got in with the uh, United Church of Christ, the Disciples of Christ, United Methodist Church, creating their four denominations. Now what's unique about this one is it still exists. And I say that's unique because if you go around the country and look for examples of ecumenical 
foundations, you can't find them. There'll be a lot of them that will start in the 70s and they quit in the 80s. A lot of those around. So we're unique. We are our community, and it reflects in our religious. So there we are. Starting in 73 and continuing today. Oh, now I've got rid of the next one. <laughs> Code is introduced and Tall Village Center. So we're making progress as we as the nation's making progress, we're making progress too. And the um, tall tall oaks is a modification of what the early village centers were like. Never quite had a, a, a enough of a concentration of services and facilities to get off the ground. And so it's kind of been consolidated into a much more convenient store kind of place. Vietnam War ends, and I couldn't find this is a kind of what happened in the rest of them. But I can assure you that a lot of people had great jubilation that occurred. A lot of opposition to the Vietnam War. That's why Lyndon Johnson never got his second term. He was so unpopular, the war was so unpopular. But again, I don't have that evidence, but I do know from the activities that occurred, particularly around the center here, that there was a whole lot of activism. I went to and joined the Reston Democratic Club. And the Reston Democratic <coughs> Club was really different than the Reston and then the, uh, the uh, Democratic Party of Reston. The Democratic Club were folks uh, like-minded, tending towards being liberal, would have programs and activities and got the great attendance. As a student of political science, I how it was working, what are they doing differently? I soon discovered that there was a big cardboard box that traveled around to the next house where the program was going to be, and it was full of liquor. <laughs> they, they, they served drinks. <laughs> it helped. <coughs> oh, we got, I finally got a post office in 76. The post office before that time was in the back of the hardware store for a while. And it, it, it was in there, they came, where was the post office, briefly? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And Chuck Beach was a postmaster too for a while, and that paid one dollar a year. <laughs> so we are up to now twenty-eight thousand residents going on towards our seventy-five. Well, I want to tell you, Jimmy Carter got like nineteen seventy-six. I'm sorry, I picked up this slide about the paper to me, and I think that you this is good to see them. Jimmy Carter is ninety-ninth birthday. I think it's quite, it's quite amazing. And you know what he's doing? What he does in his day? Builds houses. <laughs> Built houses, among other things. He looks after other people. He's concerned about other people. He and his wife eliminated a major uh, disease in Africa by research yeah. and so on and paying for it. Uh, he's still a great person. But I'm here to so. sell. I just wanted to let you know so you can send him a card. <laughs> uh, Dulles Airport, of course, had been developing along the way. Uh, on the same time frame that we're talking about now. But in 76, the big news was that the Concorde was coming. Supersonic plane got a lot of people upset. I, I and I'm sure others do get complaints until you have a plane flying over. So many planes are out here. And of course, there's been an effort to try to make sure the flight patterns don't coincide with the housing. And as much as possible, that's true. And there was everybody convinced that all the windows were going to break out of the house and the supersonic <laughs> plane would come. This of this day, one is from France and one is from England, show up with Dulles. No broken windows, uh, and of course the Concorde itself didn't turn out to be really a practical investment, so it didn't continue. So, uh, while uh, nationally, the MRI is being tested, here at home we're building Terrace Elementary School. It's the first underground school, but notice I say with solar panels. You must be making a mistake. I said, well, it's this, 1977. Her terrace had solar collectors. Remember that? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to think of something new that some of you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you remember it. Nobody speaks to it yet. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, the duplicate, the only other one that was built exactly like that was Terrace Center in Berkeley, which is yeah. where, where I grew up. So. Okay. Exact, exact duplicate of same same plans and everything. 
And you didn't think you lost any education by going to school in the dark. I didn't go to school there, but... <laughs> It was an amazing design. I, I, from the very beginning, was so impressed yeah. with how you could go into underground school and it'd be so illuminated with sunshine and light. Amazing design. And of course, ultimately, the solar collectors, which were essentially were vacuum tubes, a whole set of vacuum tubes. That's what I want to show you. That's stuff up on top. There are a series of vacuum tubes that capture the heat and so on. But the being vacuum tubes made of very thin glass and broke frequently. So the maintenance of these things was impossible, and the solar panels came up, the collectors came up pretty soon thereafter. And the interesting thing about who put up the money for having this solar system, and the Arab countries put up the money to finance it as an experiment to show how that technology could be used. Was the test two babies born? Here's one of you should sign the Camp David Accord. We got a community center. And what's unique about our community center is that <coughs> localities throughout the county, for the most part, have to kind of wait around so the county can come up with some money in order to put in the community center. But the citizens here, knowing the value of a community center to the concept of us, formed a special tax district. Five or fifteen. Five or fifteen. Five or fifteen. But don't worry about it. I'll send it to you. Send it to you. And mobile, and here's an ironic situation. Gulf Reston had invested and essentially saved Reston the concept when Simon no longer could get the financing to carry it forward. But then when Reston, when Gulf Reston, no, Reston, excuse me, Gulf decided to get out of the real estate business. They uh, sold it to Mobile, who was deciding to get into the real estate business. So it was a good handle. And again, we don't, I can't see that we lost anything. We kept the financing necessary to keep the project alive. How are we doing? Seven forty-four. ourselves, again, a, a, an indication of the, the strength of the community concept of being able to work together and put our own cash in, if you will, and the wide variety of programs and services that got us tremendous. That, that occurred in 1979. By then, we're up to 30,000 people, we're up to 349 businesses. Remember the rest of the business part, blue sign that used to stand out there? at um, Preston Parkway and uh, Sunrise Valley, I guess it was. That thing was there 20 years before the written business was <laughs> But it was a sign of hope. <laughs> and I exaggerated because there were a few that USGS was one of the early ones. And there were a few other businesses. But for the most part, it was a matter of hope. And you can see how Simon's effort in the beginning, this is not meant to be a criticism, to be a fact of life that in order to get this thing planned and the amenities in place, you can't build around Lake Ann until you get Lake Ann built. In order to do that, it took up a lot of time getting it done. And you can see then as the, uh, as the persons who may have had the same ideas of, of the rest of the community also had the economic basis for it in mind, the population continued to grow. like an investment over the years, back again in the period of the 60s and 70s. You can get tomatoes at 26 cents a pound. Wow. If you come to the plaza down here on Saturday morning, what's the rest of them? What do uh, tomatoes cost? What does tomatoes cost uh, per pound? Well, last week took them for $5. $5 this time of year. And most of the year this year is $4. Of course, that's inflation time goes on. The interesting story about this that's Meadows Farms. Meadows Farms still in business. 
but they started when a school teacher trying to make a living started selling tomatoes. So he'd gather up all the tomatoes in the region. In fact, at one point, he had a lot on all the tomatoes in the D.C. metropolitan area. And he sold them off the roadside stands. And so it soon, it soon it got so lucrative that he stopped teaching school and started running Meadows Farm. They added the shrubs, plants, and all that sort of thing. The rest is history about how successful Meadows Farm was. And he had to stand up here at 7 and bear a camera. This is my found Arthur's department store. Do you, who remembers that in her? You remember Arthur? Okay. Or the price is still the same. <laughs> if you get a shirt, if you get a shirt from 28. Is that on sale for 99 cents? 99 cents. Wow. You can watch your ribs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. If you come back and find out where that store is, send it around on the email so we're all going to be ready. But here's what you can do for Mother's Day. Again, this is an example from Herman because we didn't have a used for her car dealership. You could get a Subaru. Two doors, four doors, four doors are wagon. Two thousand. $338. Good Lord. Good Lord. Yeah, and what was Mr. Ashwell's other job? Does anyone know him? <laughs> he was a coach at Herndon and a teacher at Herndon High School. Mr. Ashwell was. Okay. Now this is a picture from a week or so. And this is a 1969 Dodge Charger. Probably have seen them. Remember this on the TV show? The TV, the TV show. Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. Thank you. But my son here likes to fix up old cars. This car may have sold for three, four thousand dollars in the original. He has now finished rebuffing it, and he's asking price for a remodel, ninety-six-nine dollars to have a Dodge Charger. Is seventy-five thousand dollars. So I hope I put this in the presentation. So if anybody wants to Okay. You look down that list and wax nostalgically about what was happening in the movies. Hot work on Rocky. The last picture show. One two what was the movie that? That's some of the exciting things on the seventh resident. Butch Cassidy. <laughs> Songs. Well, I, I pick out Bridge Over Trouble more than But I also. Uh, any of those you remember? Rest in the day. It was an evolving story that took decades to accomplish. But people were committed to a cause. They had an idea in mind, and it was a fixed idea that you could work around. You know, sometimes we don't get any place because we don't know where we're going. Dresden's a kind of ideal place where someone knew where we should go. Start 